Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazad of Chess Channel and welcome to another beautiful spectacular but of course also instructive gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish, the Palfer Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine eagle in a beautiful normal variation of the Queen's Gambit accepted. But today again we'll see the fish playing with the white pieces. Today we'll see how Stockfish is handling the early D take C4 by black. So let's keep immediate into the game. Put your seat belts on. Many many crazy things will happen here. Wild Gambit tactics all over the board. In my opinion one of the most spectacular Queen's Gambit accepted uh, openings that I've seen in my life. So with the white pieces the fish opened with the d4 we have knight to f6 by eagle knight to f3 by the fish d4 and f4 c4 queen's gambit we have now f4 d takes c4 the queen's gambit accepted e3 normal variation going for the c4 pawn we have now this move a6 very common idea by black if the bishop takes then of course you can always get an extra tempo with b5 and then um undermine somehow with the move c5 the main advantage i would say that white is here because white is of course the dominant position now in the center has now this two versus one situation in the center and the main goal is always to somehow advance the e4 pawn connect these two pawns and create of course spaces in the center of the board so that's why a6 comes with the idea when you take uh, then of course black can always hit the bishop uh, with the move b5 we have bishop takes c4 by uh stockfish 16 e6 by a eagle preparing of course still c5 or b5 we have now king side casting and now comes already i would say one of the critical moments of this game knight from b to d7 has been played now uh, here by eagle this is in my opinion a line that leads into a very very solid position for white it seems good that you could maybe immediately break and enter with the move c5 and then your knight could come on an active square but usually you want to break immediately uh, here with c5 because for instance if after something like queen to e2 um, the, and the c takes d4 happens after e takes d4 you want actually to get your knight here on c6 knight on d7 from the square c6 your knight can jump here to b4 and then you can create maybe a nice blocking system around the square d5 because there is this of course isolated d pawn and then you want to have such a strategy to create as i said nice firm position around the square when you play knight from b to d7 notice that the knight will not come anymore on c6 and it will not come anymore later on b4 and then it of course will not come on this most optimal square on the square d5 so that's why stockfish uses now this moment plays a4 is not allowing the move b5 now by black and now there is simply no worry about about this b4 weakness that you leave behind because now you have advanced the pawn to a4 but no worries about the move b4 because the knight is not going there so the knight had its chance maybe through this line c5 that we have talked about maybe later to come on b4 but now it's not possible anymore at least you need i don't know maybe even 10 moves to make that happen so that's why i move a4 here uh eagle continued with b6 of course trying uh to play bishop to b7 and battle for the e4 square we have talked about also in the beginning that the main strategic plan that the main strategic idea now for white is to push the pawn on e4 connect these two pawns and have a nice grip here in the center of the board when the pawn comes on e4 uh, then of course we have here four important squares that we're controlling in black's position so that's why here knight to c3 stockfish is preparing e4 and after bishop to b7 it seems so that e4 is not possible anymore here for white but now the fun starts look at this many of us i think would play rook to e1 or queen to e2 in order to prepare uh, the move e4 but stockfish does it immediately and breaks and enters and disrupts destroys simply this position with this beautiful move e4 really really crazy stuff let's see now what happens if you take with the bishop in the game knight takes e4 was played but if you play bishop to e4 then after knight takes e4 knight takes e4 rook to e1 you have already already a tough time for instance you're trying something like um, knight to d6 uh, also seems logical then this one is working bishop takes e6 uh, f takes e6 rook uh, knight to g5 and now rook to e6 or knight to e6 is going to happen so this is not working for instance after knight to e4 rook to e1 what you could do is maybe to connect your knight here on uh, um, on f6 try uh, somehow to protect but now with queen to c2 knight to d6 we retreat you're trying finally maybe to castle but now again a beautiful idea here comes d5 if you take then a knight to e5 is going to happen you try to castle look at this knight to c6 uh bishop is hanging on e7 so this is one line but i wanted to show you how you have a tough time 
uh, even in this line because you never castle or white gets simply too 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 much activity with the minor pieces especially the rook on the e-file is very dangerous so in my opinion also to take with the bishop is not good here so after e4 that's why knight takes e4 knight takes e4 also by the fish bishop takes e4 of course by eagle and now another beautiful follow-up d5 and here white should be actually much much better Although white lost the pawn, but still uh, Stockfish is relying simply on the attacking possibilities uh, here by the rook on the e-file. What should you do? Uh, here, if you try e takes d5, this wouldn't be so good because if a bishop to d5, bishop takes d5, queen to d5, you have to now play bishop to e7. But the issue is now the rook is again coming on the d file. The knight is immobile here. You cannot move it. Then check uh, comes on here on c6. Then uh, you could lose the queen. You could maybe try c6 yourself, trying to uh, somehow uh, get the queen out of the game. But actually, white would simply take uh, uh, stay on this uh, attack against the knight on d7. Now maybe queen to c can be played. We play some like a5 b5 now we attack even the bishop so you see black has a tough time to move the queen black has also a tough time uh, to move the king you maybe play king to f8 now you can even sacrifice now the knight is coming queen here bishop to f4 rook to e1 again i'm showing just one potential line but uh, i hope you realize that black has really a tough time to escape with the queen with the knight with the king the pieces are simply cramped they're simply paralyzed by white's activity so this is not working so after d5 that's why eagle tried this line bishop takes f3 queen to f3 knight to e5 the fork against the bishop and the queen seems logical but actually still you haven't solved all of your tactical problems here because stockfish continues with bishop, uh, queen to e4 and what should black do in the game bishop to d6 was played in one game that i found in the database knight to c4 has been played it's a beautiful game played by daniel bogdan deak against uh, murario here after move knight to c4 actually you don't have to even recapture the knight immediately you play simply d takes e6 this is the way to go after something like knight to d6 now you deliver a check uh, here with after king to e7 again i think black is simply destroyed uh, by white's activity you have to play something like f6 in order to keep the files locked now bishop comes you're trying maybe to protect here uh, the c7 now this other rook is coming into the game you're trying maybe somehow to get the bishop we're still following this game as i said in uh, in grandmaster level also um, that i found in the data but but now um, the difference is that stockfish for instance in this particular position suggests to move a5 in this game uh, rook from e to d1 was played but a5 is really really spectacular because after b takes a5 queen to uh, queen to a6 is now the best move because the threat is of course something like bishop to uh, bishop to d6 rook to d1 many many tactical problems around the square you maybe try again to develop your pieces look at this rook to c6 uh, attacks further the piece you cannot play knight to f5 here because you get simply queen to b7 there is simply too much pressure here around the square you can maybe try to get a rook into the game but now uh, for instance in this particular line you can get even checkmated so simply too too much pressure here from move uh, queen to e4 so you see knight to c4 doesn't bring you anything because of this intermediate d takes e6 which simply uh, makes the position collapse here i think of black so this is not working so after queen to e4 that's why bishop to d6 here played by uh eagle stockfish takes now uh, d takes e6 king side casting the uh, e takes f7 we have king to h8 you could of course try knight takes f7 but then after bishop to d2 queen to e8 you simply keep your pieces on the board now you have the bishop pair the position is about equal material but i think the bishops in such open games should be really really much much better or you try maybe queen to h4 trying to attack the h7 square now bishop to c3 and i think as i said this is a perfect perfect position for the attacker the rooks will come into the game the queen is misplaced here a little bit so pawn is weak here so in my opinion not a good continuation after e takes f7 king to h8 uh, we have bishop to a2 brilliant move here by the fish after queen to f6 stockfish reroutes now the bishop on this diagonal tries even to deliver checkmate we have uh, knight to g6 by um, uh, eagle makes perfect sense of course to lock this diagonal if you play g6 then again it gets tricky after bishop to h6 you could maybe try here rook to f7 but uh, then of course the rook uh, on a8 is hanging so you have to step back somewhere else you have to play something like rook to d8 and now after bishop to uh, d2 knight to f7 uh, this would be the beautiful method this would be uh, 
the most powerful move look at this rook g8 3 this wasn't playing the game but look how beautiful beautiful and spectacular this position can become because actually you cannot take the rook because of bishop to c3 uh traps the queen you can maybe cover with your knight or maybe with the rook but it just prolongs the game for a little bit so very very well stuff so you see weakening the structure in front of the king is also not possible because of this very very spectacular tactics as i said you don't have to pick up the rook here you can play maybe something like bishop to e5 but again h4 h5 you cannot take the bishop because again this rook is hanging so in my opinion, as I said, for the bishop pair, this is a perfect, perfect position when the position is so open, so, so dynamic, uh, the bishop simply left this type of structure. So that's why for bishop to b1, uh, here uh, eagle didn't want to weaken the structure further, played now this knight to g6, locks now this diagonal, and now Stockfish continues with the brilliant idea, plays again a wild move h4, sacrifices the pawn, and it was a huge surprise for me because actually Stockfish traded off the queens. And I thought, why would anyone trade off the queens because you are on the attacking side? But actually, when you think about it harder, this pawn here is such a such a um, problem for black to handle in the co next couple of moves. Stockfish, of course, protects it. And there is always a threat. Rook to e1, a rook to e8, of course, not immediately because the rooks are protecting uh, the square. But as a long-term problem, I think rook to e8 is something that bothers now black uh, through the whole game. So f for bishop to a2, knight to g6, f4, bishop to c5, a check here by um, by uh, eagle. We have king to h2, a rook from a to d8, and now a rook to e1, of course, prepares this idea, a rook to e8. We have knight to e7, we have bishop to uh, e6 with the preparation to play the move f5 and simply keep the position even more compact on light squares. When this bishop gets connected to both of these pawns, I think this is very, very an unpleasant position now to handle here for black. Knight to c8, Stockfish plays now the move f5 and now comes... Uh, a very really, really wild tactic here. Uh, Quivis, uh, uh, it's not Quivista, sorry. Eagle played now uh, the move h6 and Stockfish found the most spectacular move of this particular game. Please pause the video. Please pause the video and try to see now the best idea here for white. I'm not saying this move is immediately winning or something, but it's such a such a crazy idea. So take your time, uh, uh, dive into this position deeper and search for the ultimate stunner of this particular game. Please pause the video. What's now the best next move here for white? <coughs> Okay, here Stockfish found a beautiful way how to actually disconnect these two rooks. Stockfish plays the beautiful bishop to g5. Pooh. Crazy, 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 crazy move. Look what happens if you play h takes g5. This wasn't played in the game, but I wanted to show you how dirty really this tactic is. Now, rook to h1 is actually really already a huge huge threat because you're threatening checkmate for instance you try g6 to create yourself a breeding sp breeding square for the king now white would simply advance the pawn on f6 again not allow uh, black to have access to the squares you have to play now rook to d4 in order to somehow cover uh here uh, this uh, this uh, h file but now we play g3 with the preparation to play king to g2 and now you play something like king to h7 we play rook to g2 you have to now uh bring the rook in between and now we pick up simply the piece and white eventually wins the exchange uh of course i will not say this completely over but in my opinion in top angel level this is over because of the rook to c8 we can now play here rook to e1 you cannot even take the pawn on f7 that's the issue this is now also a cool follow-up uh rook to e7 brings you of course new headache because after bishop to e7 um uh, f takes e7 now we have these two connected uh passers on the seventh rank you can of course grab this one but this one is promoted so game over i think here for black so bishop to g5 brutal brutal move here by the fish in the game rook to d3 but this move as we said disconnects now this rook so now this whole concept with rook to e8 could work maybe in the later stage of the game stockfish of course takes bishop to c8 you see now if you take uh, then of course immediately we have rook to e8 check and uh, the game would be over so that's why bishop to d6 stockfish covers with g3 
black doesn't have so many good options you can of course play bishop to g3 but it's just one check you can of course also grab the rook but now after rook to uh, rook to e1 and something like um, rook to f7 now we play rook to e8 now we attack the rook and uh, we simply grab uh, the rook and this is of course completely winning uh, white has an extra piece black has still problems to handle bishop to g6 foul with rook to h8 so again a messed up game here for for black so after move g3 you see not, not no real threats are here so that's why uh here uh, the, uh, the eagle chess engine simply took h takes g5 and now comes this idea rook to e8 uh, this was now the whole whole uh idea of stoffish in the beginning we have a g6 now we have f6 again this brilliant idea not allow here uh black's king to escape we have rook to f3 trying somehow to grab this uh grab this piece uh on f6 stoffish continues with rook to uh d1 a brilliant idea the idea is of course rook takes d6 followed with rook to f8 in the game rook takes f6 post played and now after rook to d6 in this particular position eagle resigned so here after rook to d1 you could of course try to step back here to c5 but now of course rook takes f8 uh, bishop to f8 and rook to d8 is simply winning the game again you can j grab maybe this one but this one will be taken and uh, again white continues the game with an extra piece again game over here for eagle so as i said after move rook takes d6 in this particular position black resigned so Pooh, great tactics especially this stunner bishop to g5 this was such a such a brilliant tactic in my opinion really spectacular move which disconnected the rooks that that was th the main idea the main idea is of course not to deliver checkmate because the engines can calculate this kind of stuff but the main idea is to somehow sneak in with the rook here on e8 this was really, really a spectacular move again here played by stoffish 60 so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really really enjoyed it a lot uh, if you want to see more brutal spectacular wild attacking games like this check out our comedy chess games played by computer series here's the link of our playlist and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course